These are the fattest Joy-Con I've ever seen. What's going on, everybody? It's Zachary Switch Force. Brand new Switch leaks right here. Look at this new fancy angular Switch. It's got the nice big screen with very little bezel, and then it's got these chunky Joy-Con. Never really seen Joy-Con looking this techy, this angular, but here they are. Actually, no, this is not a Switch, but it sure looks like one. And I think this is the first time for me personally that I've ever felt like, okay, maybe Nintendo is not going to just do what we think they're going to do. And I'll explain why, but this is leaks that just dropped for Lenovo's new portable PC competitor, right? We have the Steam Deck, we have the ROG Ally, and these are just like a portable handheld thing. They don't detach, they don't come apart, it's just handheld. Now they have docks and HDMI out and you can connect them to your TV, but it's not as, I don't know, malleable as a Switch. Lenovo Legion here looks like it's trying to be Switch 2.0 before Nintendo gets there. And let me know in the comments if you like this design, if you'd buy this if it was the Switch 2. In a way, it kind of is what the Switch 2 is purported to be. A much beefier, more powerful Switch. It's got detachable controllers, it's got a kickstand on the back, and it really is taking significant inspiration from the Switch. Now it is chunkier like a Steam Deck, and it's got some odd buttons like on the sides of the, the Joy-Con here. I don't I don't know like how you would do that. There's like button like um, triggers on the back, I get, but these side buttons, very strange. Um, it's chunkier, but similar to an OLED, like there's very little bezel. You know, the OLED has like a low bezel. The screen kind of just takes up the whole thing. Low bezel here. And then it's got a stand on the back, very comparable once again to the Switch. And we can see sort of these side buttons, the triggers, the bumpers, and the rest of the deal. But what I find most fascinating about this is every company's desire to sort of take advantage of what the Switch started. Nintendo planted this idea that, okay, portable gaming is still really popular. And in fact, if we can get portable gaming working with the latest and greatest games, we could really be onto something. 130 million consoles later and Nintendo surely was onto something. And that's where the Steam Deck, the ROG Ally, and eventually the Legion Go from Lenovo are coming in. But what's odd here to me is with these detachable Joy-Con type controllers, the Switch 2 is no longer special. You know, what makes the Switch a Switch? It's the Switch ability. It's the fact that, you know, the screen loses the Joy-Con. You can attach them on, you slide them in there, you slide them off. That's what makes this a really interesting novel unit. But now we have portable games that run better, that look better, that play better, and they're more expensive, so okay, we'll set that apart. Plus they can't detach, you can't play them tabletop mode. Oh, wait, now you can. This thing allows you to go tabletop. This thing allows you to kickstand it up and kind of sit back, relax, split your Joy-Con, and you don't have to hold it. One of the complaints about a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally is like, it's heavy. It's got bad battery life. You can't play it for a long time. And even if you could, like, it's a lot to hold. And what are you gonna do, hold it out here? I don't know, it's arm crampy. It's not finger crampy like the tiny Joy-Con. And as you can see, everybody that does a riff on Joy-Con, whether it's third party for Switch or something totally different, they make them chunky. This one's got like a trackpad on the right. It's got a true D-pad on the left. The buttons are more spaced out. The sticks are a little bit probably bigger, I'm guessing. And there's much more real estate for your hands to rest comfortably. But now, what does the Switch 2 do that is new? Because the idea of a portable that can play games at a much higher rate with better processing power, awesome frame rate, and great visuals, that's been done. In fact, that's been done three times. And by the time Switch 2 actually comes around, maybe four, maybe five, maybe six times. For the first time, I'm thinking maybe Nintendo actually has something different. Maybe Nintendo actually will be innovating with a unique gimmick that helps the Switch 2 stand apart. At the same time, the counter argument is totally valid. Nintendo has no need to worry about these competitors because they don't have what makes Nintendo, Nintendo. They ain't got Mario. They ain't got Link. They don't have Smash Brothers or Metroid. They don't have Animal Crossing or Mario Kart. They have none of the games that have propelled Nintendo Switch into the stratosphere. Because at the end of the day, yes, the gimmick of the hybrid style switchable console 
is the core of what makes Nintendo Switch Nintendo Switch, but also it's the games. The software and the software attach rate have carried Switch to be the most successful console this generation and have propelled it to a place where we could get a Switch 2 that's just the low Nova Legion Go with Nintendo games and it would be totally fine. It would still be the best seller, it would still be the biggest deal, and it would still be the most accessible. I think that's one thing that these consoles, no matter their form factor, they fail to achieve. Nintendo Switch is pop a cartridge in play. The UI is simple, the UI is sleek, it's right there and ready to go. These guys, you got a whole Windows system running underneath the surface, and that is oftentimes not so easy. So Nintendo is a console, it's from Nintendo, and it's made to be easy. It's made to just work. It's made to not have the problems, the compatibility, the crashes, the issues, the need for updates that something like the ROG Ally, the Steam Deck, or eventually this Lenovo product will have. So on one hand, Nintendo, like they can just be this Legion Go with Mario Kart and boom, they're a winner. Also, these portable PCs are like six, seven hundred dollars. The Steam Deck has begun to get more affordable compared to those as it's more in the $400 range and we're expecting the Switch 2 to fall into that range as well. So when you're paying $200, $300 less and you're getting a more streamlined experience and you're getting Nintendo branding and you're getting all of the first party software exclusives that come with it, you can see why Nintendo does not need a gimmick. And yet Nintendo has always loved to be different. They've always loved to innovate. They've always loved to surprise. It's something that I think is at the foundation of their company's strategy. And it's something they've relied on forever. Look at the Wii, look at the Wii U, the GameCube was a cube, all right? The Switch switches. They have always had something quirky. In fact, they had glasses 3D on Nintendo 3DS, so what's preventing them from doing something to make sure that the Switch 2 doesn't just feel like the Lenovo Legion Go with a Nintendo logo. Setting the games aside for a second, is Nintendo too proud to just launch a cheaper, more streamlined, less powerful version of what's already being put out there? You see, when the Switch happened, there wasn't anybody competing in the handheld space. Nintendo gobbled it up because they had won with the 3DS. They easily defeated the Vita, PSP was long gone, emulation and hacks and all sorts of issues plagued those platforms. But now, we're seeing more and more portability enter the arena. Mobile phones can play some pretty cool games, Steam Deck, all of these other competitors. It's a different economy. It's a different industry. And I do think that Nintendo might just want to shake things up. But the other side of this is that Nintendo is now under different leadership. Rest in peace, Mr. Iwata. He was the most creative risk taker of all. I don't know that Furukawa feels the same. I don't know that Doug Bowser is going to prioritize a similar nostalgic uniqueness. I feel like maybe Nintendo just wants to make money now, and maybe Nintendo just wants to make great games. Would that be so bad? Absolutely not. I think this is a win-win for Nintendo fans, although one side has a higher ceiling, but also a lower floor. A gimmick-filled Switch 2 could be awesome. I don't know what they do, where they go with it. AR, VR is something a lot of people point to, but I don't feel like that market is something Nintendo really wants to tackle, especially after all the failures that many other tech companies, including other platform holders like Sony, have seen. I don't know what they would go for or do, but they could create something brand new, something unexpected, something that we currently don't know that we want or need, and it could be awesome. But gimmicks have also plagued Nintendo consoles in the past, as evidenced by the Wii U and its colossal failure. A more standard system won't be as powerful as the ROG Ally, but it will be more streamlined, it will be more affordable, and it will run all of the best first-party Nintendo software. That's the safer bet, but maybe they will go crazy. I have really firmly believe that Nintendo will just stay the course and allow the Switch 2 to truly be a Switch Pro. But now that we're waiting till late 2024, now that it's clear that this is a new generation and not just, oh, it's the Switch, but with a little extra oomph under the hood, perhaps Nintendo does have something up their sleeve. As more and more of these competitors come out, I don't believe Nintendo is reactive. There's no way they could be. This new console has been in production, development, research, all of that for years now. A last minute shift to something kooky and crazy does not behoove them and is not something that would even be possible. 
But I do wonder if Nintendo foresaw this. Copycats, competitors, they knew about the Steam Deck long ago, and maybe they're ready for it. Maybe their idea of ready for it is just a really ridiculous launch lineup. But now I'm starting to think a little piece of me that maybe they're ready for it is something really brand new. And maybe the Switch 2 won't just have DLSS technology and a better CPU and GPU under the hood. Perhaps the system won't just up the frame rate and smooth out the resolution. Maybe the system will do things that we can't even imagine yet. Is Nintendo ready to innovate and change the industry once again? Or do they just want to perfect something that's already out there in many different forms? Even their Joy-Con now are being copied. So will Nintendo be okay with that? Or do they want to be one of a kind yet again? And which is a better course for us as the gamers, the consumers? The safe route where we know the games are going to be awesome. The risky route where it could be incredible, where there's a chance that maybe they screw something up. I'm sure there's a middle ground as well where they add a quirky new feature and it doesn't risk anything, but that doesn't seem very fun. That seems kind of boring. I say go all out or just stay the course. But what would you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay up, stay positive out there. Love you lots. Switch Force, out.